If you've been <clears throat> subscribed to this channel for the past few months, you'll know I've made two previous videos about biking in China. I took my Brompen with me on a trip to China in the summer of 2024 and rode around Shanghai, Hefei, and Wuwei. One video was about the biking infrastructure I saw in China, and the other was about all the different types of vehicles there. In this video, I want to show what it was actually like to ride a bike there, and I'll do that in three parts. The first part is how I was able to navigate, since I mostly rode alone and I don't read Chinese very well. The second part is about the rules of the road, or lack thereof. And finally, I'll sum up what it felt like to ride in China compared to how I feel riding in North America. So let's begin with how to navigate on a bike in China. As you've probably noticed in the video so far, most road signs in China have both the Chinese characters and the pinyin. If I was able to find a paper map with pinyin or I wrote down directions from Chinese speaking family, I could have navigated that way. But how many people use paper maps anymore? Data plans are dirt cheap in China and my sister-in-law had a few extra SIM cards, so I could navigate using a GPS app on my phone. I've complained about Google's directions on this channel a few times before, but I won't do that in this video. Google is banned in China, so it's not an option. I had three other options, Apple Maps, Organic Maps, and a Chinese app. I mostly used Apple Maps, as I was able to get biking directions wherever I was in China. The small rural village where my Laopo grew up is more important to Apple than a Canadian city of 1 million people, at least as far as their map developers are concerned. Using Apple Maps, I was able to find points of interest and addresses in both English and Chinese. I could also drop a pin and save it so I could find my way home. Organic Maps also worked in China, though I would suggest trying to download some of the maps before you go. Its points of interest and address data aren't nearly as good as Apple's, but it gave clear directions and I could save dropped pins so I could find my way back to locations. I didn't use the Chinese app very much because, as I said, my Chinese isn't very good. Also, the app pushes so many ads and notifications to your phone, even when it's not in use. It did have one very interesting feature that I wanted to show. Most traffic lights I saw in China have timers to show how long they will remain green or red. The Chinese navigation app is able to display this info for most traffic lights I approach. I can think of a few good and bad outcomes from displaying this information, so I don't know if I want it where I live. I've just never seen it anywhere else, and I thought it was worth sharing. I'll mention a little bit more about navigating in China in the final part of this video. Next, I want to talk about the rules of the road. I'll preface this section with a toot from Not Just Bikes. I'm just slightly different than the cringy Americans. I'm blindly following my navigation app, I'm taking it slow and steady on my Brompton, and my research is that I'm on my sixth trip to China. I do have a PhD in urban planning and I'm good at making observations, but what follows is just that, my observations, not a detailed reading of a Chinese driver's manual. To me, it seems that in China there are paradoxically no rules and that they're strictly enforced. You may have noticed many poles extending across the road with flashing lights. Traffic cameras are everywhere in China to make sure people drive properly or they are fined. However, China still has a might makes right mentality to driving. If you're in the bigger vehicle, you have the right of way. It is somewhat less prevalent than when I first went to China. Now it seems more like whoever got somewhere first had the right of way. Since I was on a bike, I had a lot of interactions with right turns on red. It seems that right turns on red are legal and stopping before turning is optional. I had a taxi driver blow through a crowded crosswalk right in front of me to make a right turn on red at full speed, but I didn't get it on tape. I did get on tape that people won't drive their scooters through a scramble on the walk phase when police are directing traffic. But there's one new traffic pattern I've only seen in China that I wanted to highlight. At major intersections, through traffic goes first on a green light, but people turning left have a second stop line. You can see here how drivers have advanced into the intersection like they have a green light and are just waiting for a gap in the oncoming traffic. But they must wait for the straight through light to go red and the left turn light to go green before they make their turn. It's what people on bikes do on this left turn phase that I found interesting. In North America, I make my left turns either by being forced to go full John Forrester and ride with the vehicles or I do a two stage left turn in the crosswalks. I did this occasionally in China, as some habits are hard to break. Some intersections in North America have bike boxes for a two-stage left turn, 
if they're not being occupied by a driver doing an illegal turn. But in China, the vehicles turning left leave a diagonal gap across the intersection. Since I saw moped riders lining up in the bike lane, and I also saw left turn markings in the bike lane, I think people riding diagonally across the intersection between the left turning vehicles is the intended way to make a left turn on a bike. I didn't get any video of when it was really busy, but it's odd to be riding diagonally through the intersection with the oncoming bikes and mopeds passing on your right. You're also hoping drivers will limit their passing of other drivers during the left turn so that the diagonal gap stays wide enough for all the people on two wheels. I wish I had more video of making a left turn in China. I got used to doing it, but it wasn't something I wanted to do a lot for fun. Finally, I want to sum up what it felt like for me to ride my bike in China. It took a short time to get accustomed to riding in China. The streets are much more chaotic, but once I got more used to it, I really enjoyed riding my bike. I had to be attentive all the time, but I didn't feel very stressed. I felt safe riding everywhere, and I felt that I belonged on the road. There were two main reasons for this. First, there's safety in numbers. There are so many people walking or on two wheels that drivers are looking out for them and are respectful. This is likely because drivers either also often use these modes or have a close family member who does. This makes drivers more aware that there is almost always someone walking or biking nearby and more empathetic to the experience of someone outside a car. Second, the streets are chaotic places in China. Everyone seems to accept that. Even if they have the right of way, someone will do something crazy in front of them, forcing them to slow down or stop. North American drivers tend to get irate if anything makes them slow down. One thing I didn't really enjoy was everyone honking at everyone else all the time. Most of those honks tended to be little warning honks. If you're about to pass someone, you often give a quick honk. In North America, the honks are pretty much always someone who's angry. The thing I liked most is that I felt comfortable going anywhere. Sure, the roads were chaotic and there wasn't great bike infrastructure everywhere, but bikes and other people on two wheels slowed down when they got close. I never felt like someone just didn't see me or was trying to punish me for riding a bike when they wanted to drive, which is something that often happens in North America. Feeling comfortable anywhere meant I could just plug a destination into my GPS and go. I never planned my routes in advance and I never had to stop a route because the GPS led me somewhere that felt too dangerous. And that's all I have to say about riding a bike in China. I hope it was interesting to watch since it's much different to what you'd experience in North America or Europe. Your experiences riding in China may differ since I only rode a total of about 100 kilometers in just three different cities. Please consider liking this video if you want me to take my Brompton along and show the biking infrastructure on my next family vacation. Please consider subscribing if you want to see my usual critiquing of North American bike infrastructure with the occasional cargo bike video. Thanks for watching.